I'm James Lynch, and this is my stock report for UFC Vegas 88, taking a look at some of the biggest winners and losers from the event. And the thumbnail always gives it away. You know my biggest winner on this card. It is Brian Battle, who ended up getting a no contest against Ange Lassa, but... He looked really good leading up to that. Uh, looked like he was going to get the finish. And everything that occurred after with the eye poke, I think, was something a lot of people were thinking at home in that Ange Lassa was uh, finding a way to make sure this fight would not continue. Um, obviously, he did get poked in the eye. I'm not going to, you know, question that. But um, I, I think, you know, if you saw him after the fight, he didn't look that bad. We've seen some really bad eye pokes before. Certainly didn't look like he wanted the fight to keep going. And Brian Battle called him out on that. And I'm going to show you his interview here. I thought this was really well done on Battle's part. And, of course, he had a good uh, post-fight press as well but check this out this is to me what made his stock go up aside from the fact he looked amazing leading up to the finish here's uh brian battle it's tough because you know i put in all the work i came in at a totally different level and you know I which he's right i was beating the out of him i had him hurt a couple different times in the first round i took him down i got on top i did everything i wanted to do and he was looking you can't tell me he wasn't looking for a way out you cannot tell me he wasn't he looked at me right there just a second ago and looked at me like he wanted to fight you're telling me you want to fight now but you couldn't fight a second ago Anyways, you get the point. Uh, I just thought Battle came across really well off this whole thing. I think everyone was talking about it on social media. And I believe he was a favorite going into this fight. Not by much. Uh, let, let me actually have a quick look at the odds sort of going into this one. That's always something I consider as well. He's only minus 180, but he didn't look like that uh, early on in the fight. He looked much better. And and again, a loss of not doing a whole lot in that first round. So again, Brian Battle was my biggest winner on this card as far as, uh, you know, just everything that came out of the event. This was one of the most notable things on this card. That's kind of what I look at when it comes to the stock report. Okay, let's talk about our second biggest winner on this card and this may be one that people won't agree with here but you got to give it to Christian Rodriguez now look I don't think he necessarily won this fight I think Isaac Dolgarian should have got the decision here but it's the fact that he was getting kind of manhandled throughout the fight but he persevered and he nearly finished Isaac Dolgarian in the third round and if you hear the talk around Isaac Dolgarian and I think it's warranted Isaac Dolgarian is considered one of the best prospects at 145 right now you saw what he did to Francis Marshall in this last outing and it certainly looked like he was going to go that way for Christian Rodriguez early on but you got to give him credit he didn't give up and like I said in that third round he nearly finished Dolgarian getting a 10-8 there and ultimately winning the fight and I know there's been a bunch of stuff that's come out of that since then as far as um, you know I guess Dalgarian now saying that he was cheating and all this different stuff but this was a fight that certainly delivered Rodriguez was the underdog um, he is yet to lose uh, in the UFC outside of that debut um, which was against Jonathan Pierce on short notice he's looked good and and again like whether you thought he won this fight or not the fact that he was even this close I saw a lot of people saying Dolgarian was going to steamroll Christian Rodriguez that didn't happen Rodriguez gets the nod here again I don't agree with the decision but you can't deny his stock has gone up a bit with the fact that he does end up getting this win uh, at the end of the day it's going to say a win on his resume so you have to give him his props for uh, him getting it done there and then the other stock riser on this card as well and you got to give her credit is Macy Chasson now and again I know she was the favorite going in if you look at the odds on the uh, uh, on the judges, uh, or sorry, not on the judges, on the odds makers. Uh, she was minus 230 going in, so she was expected to do it. But I think what's the, been the big knock on Macy Chesson? She has trouble making weight. She has performances where she maybe doesn't look as good. This was a solid win, uh, taking out someone in Panny Kion's ad, uh, who's actually pretty tough to finish. If you look at Kion's ad's record in terms of uh, her losing her fights, um, she typically goes the distance. She doesn't get finished here. And again, this is a rematch from the tough finale, but the fact that Macy did it even quicker this time and just dominated from bell to bell, I think you got to give her a credit. And, you know, for a division like Bantamweight that certainly needs some noise, right? We don't even know what's going on with the title right now. Like if Ra Raquel Pennington's going to be fighting Juliana Pena, uh, this is encouraging to see this that you have a fighter in Chasson who can come out and look as dominant as she has and she talks in her post-fight interview about consistency I think a consistent Macy Chasson is a problem for this division and I thought it was cool to see her uh, you know really live up to her potential because again we've seen glimpses of it we've seen her look strong and dominant in certain fights but it's a matter of putting it together it's a matter of making it on the scale it seems like she's done that here so you got to give Macy Chasson her props um, some other notable mentions uh, as far as our honorable mentions I should say for uh, top stock risers on this card Marcin Tybura he was an underdog going in this fight he gets it done I don't really know where Tybura sort of fits in the division at 38 years old but this is a good bounce back from his loss to Tom Aspen and all uh, we can't glance over Mike Davis's performance over Natan Levy now Mike Davis obviously a favorite a big favorite going into this one I think he ended up like minus 500 or something what was it yeah minus 500 going in he looked like it uh, nearly finished Levy in the first round with knock uh, by a knockout and then he ends up submitting him in the second round 
the thing with Davis is, and he kind of talked about it in his post-fight interview, he's not really into fighting 100% in terms of uh, this isn't something he loves to do. He has other things going on outside the cage, but the fact that he's still able to put on performances like this is pretty remarkable. I'd like to see Davis be a little bit more active, but he certainly should be earning a ranked opponent after after this win because that's the type of stuff you need to do is get like a, an impressive finish. This is what Davis did in this fight. So Mike Davis, again, getting an honorable mention. A couple other quick honorable mentions. I'm just going to zoom through these because I, you know, I, I'm not going to go over every winner on the card, but I think there's some that are worth mentioning. Uh, Tiago Moises uh, bouncing back from that loss to Benoit Saint-Denis, getting a TKO win over Mitch Ramirez. Again, he was favored heavily, but still good to see Moises bounce back. And how about Jacqueline Amorium uh, being the first fighter to submit uh, Corey McKenna or to finish Corey McKenna in the UFC, right? You know, McKenna's lost before, but it's typically been by decision. Actually, that's her first stoppage loss, period. So to do it in the first round, very impressive for Amorium uh, getting it done. Um, she also closed as a slight underdog, I think, on some books as well. So uh, Morham definitely getting the nod there. And then Danny Silva as well coming through as a, a bit of an underdog, getting the split over Coolia Bow as well. So a lot of big winners on this card. But like I said, my top three would be Brian Battle, Christian Rodriguez, and Macy Chasson. We can agree or disagree in the comments. Okay, let's get to the stock droppers, the fighters who, uh, in my opinion, were some of the biggest losers on this card. And the first one has to be Tai Tuavasa. Again, Tuavasa was favored going into this fight. Yes, he had a losing streak. But what was the one of the, the things that people kept talking about with Tai Tuavasa? It's like, yeah, he's losing. But he's losing to really good opposition, which he was. Volkov, Pavlovich, gone. All contenders in the weight class. Maybe not Volkov, but Pavlovich and gone for sure. Um, and, you know, he had that five-fight win streak. He had the win over Derek Lewis. And they get finished like this again. I mean, th this is the issue is that these last couple of fights, especially, he's getting finished early. 54 seconds against Pavlovich. Second round uh, against Volkov. And then Tybura in the first round. He came out guns a blazing. Certainly looked like he might have been able to hurt Tybura Ty, Ty, uh, Ty early in this one. But ultimately, he's got four straight losses. And I think there's a case for him getting cut at this point. I mean, I, I don't know how many more fights he needs to have before the UFC decides to cut ties. I mean, this isn't BJ Penn or Tony Ferguson. He's not someone that's ever, you know, won a title or been in title contention before, uh, sort of speak. So I, I think this could be the end for Tai Tuavasa. So to me, he has to be the biggest stock dropper because he might not have a job after this. He may because it's heavyweight. You know, they always need more fighters and he's exciting. But I think there's a good chance we don't see uh, Tai Tuavasa in, in the UFC anymore. So Tuavasa to me was the biggest loser on this card just because of the fact that, like I said, he was a betting favorite. What were the odds going in he was a not not a huge favorite but he was uh i was slight favorite minus 115 not a ton but still you know this was a fight that i think was winnable for him and he doesn't get it done it goes the other way the other big stock dropper on this one is kennedy and Cheku, and uh i mean it really boils down to this he had every opportunity to win this fight he's a younger guy look at this what did he end up as minus 700 and you lose this fight come on like that's a fight he should win and at his age, uh, he's 31, like he's one of the younger guys in the weight class and just so much inconsistency here. You saw the three fight win streak he had, gets finished early by Jacoby, loses a, a, you know, a split decision to OSP. Like he should be beating OSP, realistically. OSP is also very inconsistent. He's also a lot older and hasn't been that active. And to me, this was a prime opportunity for Ncheku. And I think the UFC knew that. That's why they put this fight together. Prime opportunity for Ncheku to, to get a bounce back fight and to break through here. And he doesn't do it as a minus 700 favorite. So to me, he has to be a big stock dropper. And then someone I mentioned earlier on this card is another stock dropper for sure. is Corey McKenna. She hadn't lost in the UFC um, up until this point, And she gets finished that quickly. And, you know, I know she's only 24 and... You know, hasn't really been that active for a variety of different reasons, but to go out there and get finished like that, pretty bad. I forgot she lost to Elise Reed as well, but um, you kind of get where I'm going with. And pretty much all of her wins in the UFC are against fighters that aren't in the UFC. Hansen's gone, Granger's gone, uh, Blismas, uh, I guess, is still in the UFC, but she's obviously taking some time off. But to get finished like that, not a good look, especially as a betting favorite going in. So Corey McKenna, again, one of the big stock droppers as well. And the last one I'll mention is an honorable mention here as well. It's got to be Ong Losa. Uh, uh, Lassa. I think they say Lassa on the broadcast. That was my understanding. Uh, just because, like, I don't know. Again, not a doctor, and I'm the last guy to criticize a fighter about, you know, being hurt or not wanting to continue to fight or anything like that, but... You saw his eyes after the fight. They looked okay. He didn't have any serious damage. We've seen eye pokes where the, the, where the eye swells up or we see like a cut or we see some blood. I didn't really see that from him. And battle's right. If you watch right after, I mean, I'm not going to show it again. I don't want to get booted off YouTube or have a copyright strike here. But if you watch uh, as soon as they were about to announce the judges scorecards, uh, battle and Losa, uh, Losa just sort of went at it. And Losa was like, you know, jumping at him and stuff like it seemed like a guy who was ready to fight right then and there, but he couldn't continue. And like they mentioned on the broadcast, if you are a fighter and you say, I cannot see, that is an easy way to end the fight. He knows this. 
I don't want to accuse him of anything, but the evidence is kind of overwhelming here. I mean, if you if you wanted to continue to fight, you say, let me fight, let me fight. We didn't hear any of that from him. So his stock has to go down. Again, I know he was an underdog going into this fight. I know there weren't like a ton of expectations here, but the fact that it was so one-sided and then this is the way the fight ends, not a good look there for Angelosa. So uh, in my opinion, he's one of the honorable mentions for stock dropper on this card. So... I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Who are your, some of your biggest winners and losers on this card? I always love to hear from you guys because I, you know, again, I have a different perspective than maybe some of you do. So just uh, let me know who you agree with, disagree with, or, or some of the ones that you would want to have seen on there. Let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.